Welcome to the Manifestation Refinery, a series of videos that we will visit one by one together. The first thing I want to point out today is sort of an odd spot that we all seem to get caught in when we first begin to realize that we do indeed create our reality. In this weird little odd spot, we're kind of contorted and distorted jammed into a limiting spot that we're too big for. And even though we have at least somewhat accepted the idea that we are creating our own reality, there's suddenly a roadblock that we encounter initially and it sends us off course. And this roadblock is what I want to speak to today. As this new thought that we create our reality begins to sink in, we all seem to get stuck for a moment because we're trying to understand something incorrectly. As we begin to grasp the idea that we create our reality, we innocently assume that this means we create whatever we want. And actually, that is true, but we do not only create through desire or by what we want. Just like there are many roads that flow into a town and you could choose any one of them and still arrive there, what we want is only one potential road of manifestation that we can and do travel. But in the beginning, we somehow come to believe that it is the only one. And because of this incorrect thought, we have a hard time seeing the truth because we somehow initially draw the incorrect conclusion that we create only through the streets of desire, we find it hard to believe how someone would really want to get cancer or that the tsunami victims all wanted to die or that someone wanted to lose their home and job or that they wanted their loved one to pass or that they wanted their husband to abuse them. We don't see how that could be, and we have a hard time getting around this roadblock at first. And so this is the point I hope to bring you today, and here it is. There are many potential roads to manifestation. In other words, we do not create only by what we consciously want, and that is the incorrect belief that we tend to hold in the beginning. But I hope you'll set that down today and never pick it up again because it isn't true. Yes, we do indeed create through the vehicle of desire or want, but only when we can clearly see and feel ourselves achieving this want. And only when we bring that into the doorway of now can we obtain it because on that threshold the entire world is continually born and reborn over and over and over. So this means you can want something with all your heart but if you're afraid you probably won't get it then you probably won't. Or if you consciously or unconsciously give yourself a reason that you can't have it, then it will probably never arrive. Or if you distance yourself from it and only place it in your future, then you will probably never touch it, no matter how much you might like to. This doorway of now is the maternity ward of creation and your ability to conceive these things that you desire and see yourself holding them in your reality is the womb in which they grow. So, knowing this, it sheds a bit of light on how so many of our desires never manage to come into being. We are not embracing them in our now. We've placed them somewhere in our future, and so there they shall remain. We've placed them out of our reach. We have designated them as acts of the future instead of acts of now. And thy will will be done. They will not be able to enter your now no matter how much they are desired. 
So yes, we do create by desire, by want, but it only comes to walk in your present moment when you see it walking in your present moment, when you've given it permission to do so. And this is one of the most common reasons we don't seem to get what we want. If it's merely a dream that you would like to see someday, rather than something that has already come to be and is making its way to you now, then it will most likely always remain out of reach and in your future. And I bet that answers a lot of questions that you might have about never seeing what you earnestly desired to manifest, doesn't it? That's why they couldn't come to you. The doorway to now is the maternity ward and your ability to see yourself already sincerely in possession of whatever you desired and to look past what your storyboard currently shows you and know that thy will will be done is the womb that matures and assembles your desire into reality. And this is tricky to do. We have a hard time looking at, for example, an empty bank account or a bad relationship or an illness and seeing past it. We largely believe what our eyes seem to see, but this is what you have to do. You must be able to look at it and know that that is merely how things appear at the moment in your now because what you're looking at is what you've unconsciously cooked up and placed in the doorway of your now. That's the only reason it's there. You gave it entrance to your world unconsciously or consciously through this doorway of now. And so we have to let go of that thought and imagine another thought there. And this is hard for us to do in regards to direct manifestation, but not always. I would like to point out that we look at the sunset and have no trouble believing that there will be a sunrise tomorrow, don't we? And we have no trouble planting a seed and envisioning a plant that will stand there in that very spot in a matter of days that bears no resemblance whatsoever to the seed. We have no trouble believing that though we had bad dreams the night before, we could have lovely dreams tonight. We have no trouble believing that a cool drop of water could seem to disappear as it transforms itself instantly into a gas at the touch of a hot stove. And your mind is this hot stove, transmuting seemingly one thing into something entirely different. Our task is to learn to cook like we know what we're doing, and I hope this series helps us to accomplish that. So, that is the first thing that I want to point out. Just because we want something does not mean that it will come to pass. It depends upon how we are wanting it. And also, wanting something is not the only path of manifestation, though this is what we nearly universally come to accept in the early stages of accepting the truth that we create our reality. We think it means we will get what we want, and actually that's true, we do. But it's only one way we manifest, and even under the best of circumstances, our wants can have very, very peculiar, well-hidden roots. And this is the other thing that I hope you will see today. Because this is one of the biggest reasons that we initially doubt that we create our reality is the real deal. How could it be true? We have a hard time here. I mean, who wants to get cancer? How did the tsunami victims all want to die? Who wanted to lose their home and job? What person wanted their loved one to pass away? Who on earth would want their husband to abuse them? 
we don't see how it could be true, and so we have a hard time allowing the truth of our creation to take root within our consciousness. We reject it. We haven't been able to bring ourselves to truly believing it until today. Today, we're going to see how this could happen, and one way it does happen is through hidden roots. We don't see these roots because at this point, we still tend to look at things superficially, at ground level, and to see the roots, you must go deeper into the soil of our unconsciousness from which much of our world springs forth. Let's take the example of the woman who is abused by her husband and look at a handful of the ways that this experience could enter her storyboard. And I'm betting you're going to be surprised because no, it doesn't always gain entrance because she wanted to be abused, because she would somehow masochistically enjoy that. For most people, that is not the case. But it could enter her storyboard as the vehicle for her to express her sense of low self-esteem. This abuse from her husband could be the way that she unconsciously acts out this opinion of herself of being unworthy and that others will always take advantage of her. So do you see? She didn't want to be abused per se. Rather, it might merely be the way that she is acting out her opinion of herself of demonstrating her hidden and unconscious belief that she is not good enough. And this abuse from her husband might be the vehicle for her to express this hidden belief. And whatever we truly believe will come forward, however it is able to manifest for your given storyboard. Count on it. Please join me for part two of the Manifestation Refinery.